Thanks everyone uh, again for coming. We decided to hold this in a webinar style because there is um, quite a few people that are coming on and we just felt it would be better um, uh, not be able to people not muting themselves and um, people talking over the top of each other. So we just felt that this might be a slightly better way to do this presentation. But you can, um, if you can find the chat function and you would like to ask any questions as we go, then please feel free to do that. We've got about four slides to go through with you. Uh, when we get to the second, at the end of the second slide, we'll, we'll stop, pause there and ask uh, anyone if you've got any questions and then we'll proceed with the final two slides. So, Ashley, we might um, get you to, um, I'll stop sharing this screen and um, if you would like to share your screen, There we go. Technology, how wonderful is it? Good stuff. So, um, I'm just going to present. Thanks. There we go. Okay. So, thanks again for coming. Uh, just the first slide we want to show you is just a very general overview of the new high performance system for Australia. And um, uh, so, this is, you know, a high level helicopter view. Uh, Everything that we are going to show you today is draft. We are um, meeting with um, and presenting to a wide range of people throughout the badminton community. I think, I think when we're all done, it'll be over 150 people that we would have presented to and got feedback from. So we're really looking uh, for all of you to provide feedback either today or after today uh, uh, or, or to give up either Ashley or myself a call and have a chat about this new model that we're proposing, but we really require your input. So it's not my plan, it's not Ashley's plan, it's not even Badminton Australia's plan, it's a plan for our whole sport. And uh, so we really want everyone to provide their input and feedback so we can then roll this um, out over the coming, coming years. Uh, uh, so our, when we're just looking at it from an overall point of view, our purpose is to build a sustainable high performance system that enables athletes to succeed on the world stage. And our vision is to inspire the Australian community through badminton success. So getting more people and growing the sport. We've got a number of values that, that we're looking at. Um, we've got six all together that you can see that is coming up on your screen now collaboration, leadership, responsibility, respect, inspire and celebrate. That's probably six is probably too many. Maybe there's maybe a couple of those we can combine. Maybe we need to drop off or maybe there's one there that you think is really important that we haven't got. But I might just call out two of them. And the first one is collaboration. We really think moving from what essentially now is a centralized system, it's particularly in the senior area, a centralized system based in Melbourne is not going to be the case anymore. It's a decentralized system supporting athletes across Australia. So collaboration is going to be really important. Collaboration uh, between states and clubs, collaboration between coaches, collaboration between players, coaches, families, and Badminton Australia, collaboration between Badminton Australia and the state organizations. Um, uh, the, uh, the real way that we will get success and where Australia excels as a, as a community and as a country in sport is working together. So that collaboration is, is critically important for this to be successful. Um, and celebrate is, is the other one that I think, um, you know, is maybe a little bit different to what you might have seen in, in values before. So, you know, we don't have players, as you know, at the moment in the top 10 in the world. Uh, but there's plenty of other things that we can put in place that we can be best in the world at and we can celebrate. We can be best in the world at the way that we build athletes as leaders for the future. Um, we can be best in the world at the way we organize ourselves. We can be the best in the world of, around the coach development and education. We can be best in the world about the health and well-being of athletes and the balance athletes need to have between um, being an elite badminton player and also 
um, their schoolwork and their family life and their home life and getting that balance right. And when we, when, we, you know, when we can get there, we're not there with any of those things yet to be best in the world, but when we do, we should celebrate that. We don't just have to celebrate having players winning, winning medals. We can celebrate all those other things as well. So the other thing about this system, it is an athlete-centered coach-led system. And when Ashley in a moment goes through our uh, uh, model, um, and the steps is that it is just this system is uh, what we're proposing is just as much about athlete development as it is about coach development. We will only be able to get long term success and um, success in the coming years um, uh, if athletes and coaches are both being developed um, and can come through the system and get success um, through um, through uh, the uh, um, uh, international events. And hopefully all of those things will then, <laughs> what we'll, we will do is, is we'll generate that medal success um, uh, uh, that, um, that, that we'd all like to achieve. So actually we might just move on to the next uh, slide now and um, I'll hand over to you from here. Thank you, Jamie. And welcome everyone. Great to have you with us. and. Thanks for being with us and uh, allowing us to share this share this with you. And as Jamie said, this is um, something I'm about three months into the role now, a little bit over, but even though I've been bunker down at home most of the time, it's been uh, great to be able to, to catch up with uh, a lot of people and some of you I've even uh, spoken to directly. So I'm just going to take you through our new our draft. As Jamie said, this is a draft, so we're after thoughts and, thoughts and feedback. So we're really keen to hear... Uh, your thoughts around this uh, new system and new model for us. We know the importance, and we think we'd all agree, and I think in any high-performance pathway that you, you present or you roll out, it's really important to make sure that we have a foundation program. It's at local club where we all start as a, as a young player uh, to be able to uh, have a safe environment, fun, engaging, uh, and really a great introduction to sport. Build some really good foundations, uh, start to develop our professional development of coaches, our club-based activities, which I'm sure uh, the coaches and the clubs are out there now is, uh, is what you're currently implementing. So it's really important to, to recognise that in any high-performance pathway system because uh, you're only good as the base you have too. You know, kids and talent playing the sport ultimately, hopefully over time, uh, helps us achieve long-term success as well. And the first step out, out of club level will be into our national state camps, which Badminton Australia will help drive around the country through each of the states. I'm looking around about two of these each year into each of the states, and we'll only be looking at piling these into next year. We're mindful we can't do everything all at once. Uh, and the age range around this will be around that sort of 10 to 16 years of age. We know that badminton's a multi-skilled sport. Uh, it takes a you know a bit of time to be able to develop skills over time, to you know from that foundation level, you know right through to that you know very highest level. So uh, we put an age range in there around, around about sort of 10 to 16 to help grow, start to grow and develop those skills. We'll then start to look at just some foundations. What are the key qualities that that young athlete might have currently within their uh, within their development? Whether it's technically, tactically, do they move well? Are they good competitors? So we'll be looking at those sorts of qualities just to start to get a little bit of an indication that might mightn't be too extensive at that young age, but just start to build some information. Then we'll start to educate our coaches as well. So it'll be coach education support, bringing our coaches together to help share information with each other starting to look at what the athletes doing in their local daily training environment. We know it's important to get just good quality coaching at that young age uh, and, and developing good skills. So just round what they're doing in their, their weekly program with their coach and their club. And the other one really important, which I'm sure everyone would agree uh, and all the parents would agree would be the parent education. Really good to start that young and then start the process of educating our parents. Um, obviously, our outside our coaches, uh, you know, parents' support uh, is really paramount throughout the whole throughout the whole journey. And then aligned with that at state level, we'll have what's called our state development squad. So this will be state driven. Uh, Badminton Australia work with the states to implement this program, but the states will be ultimately responsible for the for the delivery. And this is just a regular group training session of bringing our better cohort of athletes together, just to train together once a week, 
outside of their current environment they're they're already training in and to more competition based tactically based obviously all the technical and foundational work will be done in their own club but just an opportunity to be able to bring that cohort of athletes together to be able to train we know that at the young age it's important to to give young athletes that little bit of recognition and, and support to help uh, help support their development again around an athlete development plan starting to gauge what the athletes have in place at that young age professional coach development daily training environment and also just a bit of a plan uh, around that group training session again just looking at around about one pretty much once a week over those sort of normal school terms throughout the year and I think that'll be a very important program for us that'll sort of help align too with what uh, the the athletes are doing in their own home environment. So you see at that state level, some camp-based key messages, bringing everyone together, sharing of information, and then also that state level where we're getting, you know, those better kids together as much as we can within, you know, within reason, depending on what they're currently, what they're currently doing. That then leads into our national development program. So they're starting to get some success through that state level. Their game's coming along a little bit more. They're improving certain skills. And they're starting to move on to that sort of higher national level. So this is what we've called our national development program. It is currently our national junior training group. Okay, so, so we've decided to call this a program, which is more about a suite of opportunities and support that we're providing in this decentralized structure. So you can see it's more camp-based environment. You can see the age range is a little different. We've pushed up a little higher through that age range because we're mindful that athletes get to that sort of high level we get a little bit of drop out there. How can we keep those better athletes in the sport to make sure that we're still engaging in? Obviously, we have to get the level right, make sure the level is there, but try and engage as much as many athletes through that space as we possibly can. And one key component of this, which will be also through our state level, right through our national level, is this idea around what I've called CAPS, which is just simply coaches, athletes, parents, and staff, or all our key stakeholders. Uh, which we will engage and be front of mind when we deliver each of these initiatives or each of these camps, providing education development for our coaches, providing education development for our athletes, parents, and also our staff as well. Again, that whole collaborative approach of everyone working together. Again, our daily training environment of athletes will become really important because they're getting to that high national level now. They're starting to look at international benchmarks, their daily training environment. We know the demands as they get older, become a lot higher so the support will need uh, the support network around them will be uh, will need to be stronger the athlete development plans as well will have some good real good information at that state level which will be paramount for us as they transition into the national development program our national team selection really important at that stage they start to get selected for teams and obviously that international experience that they uh, can be provided will help support their development we know the importance of quality competition, making sure aligned with their training, that they're just playing good competition to help support that development. Again, the ongoing professional development of our coaches will be really important. Our national program staff, just getting out on the ground and visiting our athletes, our cohort of athletes and coaches in their home environment, just to see and understand a little bit more about what they do. And then we know the physical demands of the sport as well as we start to get to that higher end a lot more training, a lot more volume. So we need to make sure that we're looking after our, our bodies and the whole sports science starts to kick in a little bit more there as they get a little bit older. And again, the importance of the parent education and really too, this, this whole health and well wellbeing is really important as we know, uh, the demands of the sport, the pressures of the sport, uh, attending school, exams, all the rest of it. We know the demands become a lot higher as they reach that high national level or starting to transition on an international level. So the health and well-being of our athletes will be will be really important for us to, to start to focus a little bit more on. So now we're starting to get to the pointier end, pointier end of our system. Uh, this is really where they're starting to transition onto that international benchmark. And we, um, actually, maybe if I can just jump in. So sure. many of you who are on the call are familiar with the current national junior squad and uh, Jill and um, Stuart uh, Rollins have been doing a great job on that. So this um, national development program is the next evolution of the national 
squad. A couple of the key differences um, between the current program and the new national development program is planned to be that the age group is 14 to 21. So we've got a lot of feedback from many people and, and a number of you on this call as well, is that a lot of players, you know, they, they, they finish when they're 18 or 19 out of the national junior program, but they're not quite ready yet to step up into the national senior program. Uh, so what, we've done, what we're planning to do or what we're proposing is to, um, for those athletes who it's suitable for that um, haven't quite developed, you know, they need a bit more time to develop to peak, is that they could stay in the national development program until up to 21, up to under 21s, um, so that they can continue to to be developed. So that's a that's a critical um, difference. And the other the other uh, difference um, also is we are really going to be encouraging coaches of athletes to come along to those national development program camps as well. Um, so that way, um, that's collaboration. Remember that that was a value collaboration. So coaches can collaborate from across Australia more often. We can bring in coaches from overseas, techni technically techni with technical expertise that can coach the coaches. So, um, uh, so when you, um, for those of you that do have um, juniors at the moment, we would uh, we will ask that you come with them as well and you will coach them, but be mentored by the national coaches who are there and any um, um, overseas coaches that we might bring in. Thanks, Ashley. I just thought it was important just to highlight that for everyone as a key difference. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, no, just to reinforce that point, I think the learning from not just obviously our, our, our staff, but learning from each other will be one of the key things I think is really important. There's a lot of data and research out there that shows that coaches sharing information with each other and you just take something away from that coach and you get better and improve uh, that will be a really important part of this approach is you know just everyone working together to help share information and that way we all improve and we all get better I'm sure all the coaches out there have been a coach for a, a long time myself and a lot of learn, what I've learned as a coach I've learned from other other coaches and that's how you know I've built my philosophy which I'm sure you have over time as well so that will, will be a, a key component. And then finally, the ultimate outcome is obviously to try and get as many athletes as possible through to that highest end of the sport. You know, Olympic, Olympic Commonwealth Games level is, is where we're really trying to aim towards. And that's where we know the selection again comes in through that junior, through the senior, but then obviously onto the very highest end of our sport. We still believe the caps is really important right from the base of the pathway, right through the very highest end, our key stakeholders all the way through. Uh, will be really important to us. International competition, which I'm sure you would all agree is trying to get that exposure internationally, particularly through that junior senior years before they then get onto that Olympic level, getting those experiences against international, the best in the world uh, and being able to compete with them will be an important part of building that development for, for the future. Again, it'll be more camp-based environment. Again, there'll be a connection between the senior program and then obviously the Olympic program as well. They'll in some ways be hand in hand and uh, work closely together. And of course, the athlete training environments and you can hopefully see some consistencies there throughout through the whole pathway, but also see the demands and the extra support that's required once they get through to that highest level. We have some great information about the athlete development plans, right hopefully from that start of the journey down at that local level ultimately right through to that, that highest level. The ongoing professional development will be really important of our coaches. The individualized physical support, for performance support. Again, sports science, I think I referenced that before, particularly through that high-end junior senior level. The sports science that we need around our athletes will become a lot stronger because we know, again, the demands of the sport, the pressures of the sport. And obviously we want to make sure if they've got to be healthy to be able to obviously continue to perform. And we know the long journey that it takes from that lower level to the highest level. Again, health and well-being, uh, and also career planning at that senior level, that real high level. I think over time we need not just good athletes, but good people and, you know, working towards their future. What, where does their future lie? Even potentially outside the sport, you know, that, you know, average age, you know, we can't play forever. So by time, what's your thinking in terms of um, terms of once you retire, where you're heading from there. So we'll help support the athletes in around that 
uh, as well. So those are the, the steps. Hopefully you can see there some consistencies in terms of our priorities. They increase as we get to the highest end, but coach development is important. Our planning around our athletes, their, their daily training environment, the parent education, the competition is all integrated within that. So it's really important to recognize within this system what are the key areas of the business or our organization that we really need to be able to be aligned with. And the first one, which I'm really excited about, is our performance pathway partners. We just call them the triple P's. That's our clubs. That's everyone out there as we speak. They're in club land, associations, schools. They're actually currently not just delivering the sport, but also developing uh, performance or high performance athletes. We want to work with you, support you, get closer to what you do, help, help um, support. We know the demands of particularly as we get to that highest level. It's not easy, the time constraints, the, you know, the investment and all of that. So we want to just try and help support you with that uh, right the way through from the base of the pathway right through to the to to the top and you know the athletes that are in our programs may be in one of these um, uh, these performance pathway partners or one of these programs or they may not so this is to say that they they do the athletes will still and the coaches will still be uh, supported but we feel this is a real uh, great way to help so you know, almost future proof the sport in some ways from a from a performance and a development point of view so we're really excited about this initiative and it'll be around the daily training environment the athlete development plans and the professional coach development you can see that resonate all the way through the programs that we that we offer so and this is a really exciting program this one i think um you know my research around other sports and and what they're doing and even around the world i think this sort of program has um has some real uh, benefits for the sport uh, long term. So I look forward to sharing more about that as we sort of get into next year, as we sort of start to again pilot that system. I'll talk through the next steps in a little bit. From there, again, you can see all the way through the steps there, the importance of the, the coach education and development. So it's important to reflect our pathway, our coach and official pathway. So that's all of our, obviously our qualifications, the building of a national curriculum. So aligned with this now, in the background, we're starting to, to look at, well, what are the key things we need, you know, right from that lower level, right through to the highest level, key qualities, developmental qualities, what do they look like? What are the priorities? Uh, and then also our courses as well, our coach education courses, and of course our professional development, which you would have seen resonated right through the whole of the, the pathway. And last but no means least, and probably uh, one of the most important to complement the training pathway is our competitions pathway, right from the local through to the international level. To really complement this training pathway that we put together, align the competition because we know that they they work together. In fact, athletes, you know, I'm sure the coaches out there agree. I mean, training's fantastic. You've got to get all those skills out on your training court, but what you learn in competition regardless of results and performances, has uh, exceptional value. You know, take the rankings, take the results out of it. What you're learning each time you compete against a different person will help with your development over time. So we really know uh, the importance of that. So it's important to reflect that in our pathway. And then two, which is a really important part, helps fund what we, what we do and will help support this pathway is our athlete categorization model. So it's our foundation programs, as I mentioned before, right from the base through to our demonstration of potential and developing emerging through those junior years, really important phase that to be able to prepare athletes for podium level, podium potential and ready, and then also onto podium as well. And you'll see the little icons are reflected there. That's the athlete categorization. So that's our foundation our talent, you know, so you're starting to develop those talent skills. We then believe you start to get to elite by the time you get to that senior level and then podium, you're sort of onto mastery and you've sort of achieved um, those, those skills. So that's our, that's our system. That's our new pathway model that we're, we're proposing. I know there's, there's quite a, quite a bit in there and I've, I've talked through quite a bit. So I hope it was easier to follow and, the consistencies there that are throughout each of the different programs too, but also the other key components to this system and model will help support because this will be, I think Jamie reflected on it earlier, it'll be about everyone working together 
to be able to to develop this over over time. Thanks, Ashley. So, uh, so this is this. We've still got a couple of other slides to show you. Uh, we just want to pause here uh, so that you've got a chance to ask us any questions. So, in the um, chat function, if you've got any questions, please shoot them through. We will also be um, uh, sending this presentation out to you all uh, uh, later today so that you've got a chance to read through it in detail and then also think about it a little bit and then provide us with any feedback. Uh, so just um, look out for that. We'll send that to the email that you registered on. Um, we've just got one question that's come through about bad, uh, para badminton. Um, so that's a really good question. So our aim is that the para badminton uh, system will um, mimic this um, as we we build it over the coming years. Uh, para badminton is is um, is uh, relatively small at the moment. Um, we don't get any high performance funding or only only a fraction, hardly any money at all. But that goes to employing um, 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 employing Ian Bridge. Um, but we're hoping that um, through the work that Ian Bridge is doing. Um, and uh, here, uh, the para program aligning with this is that ultimately we will end up with um, a separate junior squads for para and, and senior squads for para rather than being together. But certainly any para, para players that are, um, any para players that are categorized so that, um, that um, those items at the bottom, podium, podium potential developing and emerging. Um, they will certainly be supported also by Ashley as well as the national coaches. And then as we um, achieve more, more on the world stage, we would hope to get more funding through the AIS and then we can develop para further. So I hope that um, answers your question. Um, so just another question there, Ashley, can you expand a little more on the club daily training support? Do you wanna have, do you wanna answer that one? Yep, sure, no problem. So I guess what we mean by that, particularly down at that local club level, is just any support that you might need in terms of, you know, just a, a draft in terms of what an athlete development plan might look like, uh, you know, weekly training schedule resources, um, competition schedule resources, anything that will really help in the planning, uh, that which you may already have, some coaches may, or I'm sure, already have, in place as we speak, you know, just around your your annual annual plan, if you like, and how you go about uh, your coaching. So we'll be there just to help support you with that if you need it. You now, if there's any other different things you might need to to add to your to your um, uh, coaching toolbox, if you like, you know, and around any little vision, you know, do you do you do you get a lot of vision of your players to look at their technical elements. We'll be there just to help support you and and guide you with everything that um, that you need. So that's really about what that resource support uh, would be to help just support our coaches out on the ground to help you with the delivery. Just also, if you can see um, that what uh, Ashley was talking about, the coach and official pathway, a big long line at the bottom, you'll see one there called national curriculum. So one of the things we are, we are going to develop over the next year or so will be a national curriculum that provides guidance to coaches on what they should be coaching their athletes at an age, whatever age they are or, or level that they're at, what they should be coaching to ensure that they can be successful when they're, when they're older. So as we know, um, if you have a look at the stats, um, um, uh, the average, the, the age range of the top 10 athletes in the world are generally aged between about 24 and 28. So a 12 year old who's starting now, um, or a 10 year old even, has a 15 year cycle. Uh, so that national curriculum um, will be helpful, I think, to clubs and coaches and how to do that. Um, the other support um, uh, that uh, will be able to provide clubs are those clubs, they're the ones that would be identified as a um, PPP, a Triple P club, um, where they would get visits from the national coaching team um, and uh, be provided with a, with a bit more uh, support because they are in that partnership role. We can't, unfortunately, we can't, there's 280 clubs around Australia. We can't help every single one from the national office. We just don't, we'd like to, but we just don't have enough resources, but we are going to channel what resources we do have into those um, key performance path partners and then um, all those um, uh, coaches who and clubs that have athletes on the national national programs. 
just to support you there, Jamie, I think it'll be important as we as we go into next year we and we pilot and we hopefully again try and as many coaches as we can within reason, obviously, to be able to be involved in our camps is the sharing of ideas and thoughts. There's a lot of experienced coaches out there on the ground that are working with our with our best athletes. So I'll be interested in your thoughts in terms of you know, from a national cur curriculum perspective, what are the key things we need uh, to to develop through those age ranges? And uh, so your thoughts and feedback will be important on that. So as we work through these camps and get together as coaches, we'll be able to share real more information. So it's not just um, not just Badman Australia, but everyone, you know, working together to be able to share their thoughts and, and what are the key things that we need to look at from a development point of view. So we just got another question from Doug about internationals next year. That's a little bit off track because this is about the pathway. But just very quickly, um, BWF have cancelled the national, international um, um, or world junior championships that were to be in New Zealand have been cancelled. Oceania championships have been postponed. You might have seen that from BWF. We are still planning in Australia to run our internationals Australian internationals in Sydney and Bendigo next year um, and uh, 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 obviously there's the Olympics and um, uh, Suderman Cup um, which we would hope to qualify uh, as well as, as the Oceania representative so we're still planning for all those things but as you know the, um, the virus is uh, very unpredictable and um, we'll just have to rely on government advice about whether we can travel um, there's just another question about will the National Foundation program be funded by BA at a club level? The short answer to that is no. Um, we will assist clubs with developing their business model uh, for those clubs that wish to um, have athletes on the pathway. Um, uh, if we ever got government funding where we would be able to fund that, then we could. Um, if uh, the states would ever, um, you know, allow us to increase fees large enough so we could fund states, uh, clubs, we would, but that's, uh, that's not going to happen. So, so it's really about your club um, at that foundation level being able to develop a business model that can work for you so that you can support the, the costs involved in developing athletes. Because to be on high performance and be truly high performance and operating at a high performance level, it is expensive. Um, so whether you're a parent, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a club, um, whether you're even a state organization, even us as a national organization, it is expensive to run high performance. So at a, a club level, it's um, uh, in terms of ex expertise and resources and a national curriculum and coach education, then you know, those things are things that the states and badminton Australia can invest in. Um, but in terms of the running of the club and the costs of soda say, associated with funding coaches and that type of thing, the club needs to develop that business model that can work for them. Um, um, in the yellow and green, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's a combination of self-funded government funding, um, us using sponsorship money um, and fees that we collect from um, states to help fund uh, the model. Uh, so unfortunately, we, uh, the government funds sport based on how successful they've been in the past and how likely it is that they might win um, medals at Olympics. And unfortunately, at the moment, we in badminton haven't won medals in the ever I think in, a, in Olympics um, and so it's a, it's a bit of a chicken and egg issue of getting you got to be successful to get funding and you need funding to be successful so uh, uh, so this model is about trying to be sustainable for the next 20 years um, so uh, but it is a combination um, in terms of, of funding of um, funding from parents in the junior area maybe clubs if they want to fund their athletes as well um, and then government money and any sponsorship money we can get. Um, I should just point out too, in the national senior program, um, we, uh, that will be, we're looking at around 30 athletes because aligned with this is the selection policy of athletes. It's about 30 athletes in the national senior program. Um, and you can be selected into teams by being part of the senior program and about 35 athletes in the national development program. So, um, uh, but in the um, national state camps, we would expect across Australia, 
um, around 150 people being selected into those and we will be working hand in glove with states for that selection. Now there will be a cost to go to those national camps because there are costs associated with shuttles and hire of venues and you know all those sort of things but we would expect maybe it would that wouldn't be too much um, relatively and that would be quite affordable for people to attend. Ashley was there anything you wanted to add just to that I, I spoke for a little while then. <laughs> no I'm good no I think we've covered covered all and this is there any I think there's another, there's another question in the, in the uh, question box before I move on. Um, no, so maybe right. we'll move on to the next two slides okay. and then we can open up for questions again at the okay. end. Right, sounds good. Okay, so just uh, moving on now just to our to our team. So with the model and the system that we've just taught you through, obviously there's a, a team a team around this. Uh, so I just want to take you through, through that now. So you can see myself, obviously Jamie uh, heading up the organisation, got myself as the performance pathway manager in the process at the moment of recruiting a national development coach lead. So they'll be particularly focused on that junior level. So that uh, the yellow section, if you like, of the, the new system and model, but obviously aligned with the senior, the senior, um, the senior program as well. Moment two, we've got Stu Brio, that heads up the Olympic squad campaign along with Jeff as well at that very highest end uh, of the sport. We're in the process of recruiting for a national coaching director as we speak as well to help at that to get that senior and that Olympic level. And then as Jamie mentioned, we've got Ian Bridges does a great job in terms of that para space as our national para uh, head coach who works right across the pathway from that junior level right up to that senior level. And I think over time that that area will, will grow. So we'll look to hopefully uh, increase the resources accordingly. So, uh, and also align with that, which will continue to evolve over time is the performance support, the performance science support around the whole system and model. And we're uh, working through that as we speak. And we've got some key people that help assist us, but I think over time that will can expand as well because we know the demands physically around the sport are, are really uh, are really high, particularly as we get to that high junior level and onto that and onto that senior level, and of course, obviously our volunteers uh, and officials are a really important part. So, uh, but I think overall, obviously we've got a team of coaches, but I see this as um, everyone working together with the model that I've presented to you. There, it's all our coaches that uh, are out on the ground day to day, week to week, because ultimately you're, you know, you're living and breathing it every single day. So, and I know the demands myself, as I said, I was a coach and I know it's not easy. It's hard work to develop athletes from that young age, right through the highest level. So this cohort of coaches and team will be there to just help, help support you. So I think over time, the more we have everyone working together over time, it's just going to increase the chances of um, producing athletes, not just, good athletes so we want to obviously have high, but, but good people as well. And we know that not all going to make it to that highest end, but how can we also, you know, keep people involved in the sport and maybe they want, you know, want to move into coaching, maybe want to move into the administration side of the sport. So, you know, look to expand the opportunities there uh, as well. So uh, if there's any, any questions on that, if there's any thoughts or questions. We might, we might just to, move to next steps next and then steps. we'll take yep. questions all in okay. one go. All right. So from here, so the next steps from here are to, as we're doing as we speak, so we're consulting with a, a number of Griffin groups. So we've, we've had our coaches, our states and our athletes and all our key stakeholders. We met with the AIS as well and obviously as the, as the, the local club environment. So we'll continue to do that. And this is ongoing. This model refines almost every other day or week, Jamie. We're, we're always... <laughs> We're always refining and adapting little things to this. Collaborative, so. <laughs> a collaborative plan that we <laughs> all own. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, a lot of back work, you know, behind the scenes goes on. Um, and I see it firsthand as, as Jamie, you know, little tweaks. So your feedback is really important. It doesn't go unnoticed. It's really important to us. So we'll continue to refine that. And then as we get through the back end of this year, and part of the reason we're doing all our planning now is to look at what we can pilot going into next year. Hopefully the world's a different place and things are uh, okay for us. Then we'll start to pilot some of these national state camps, our performance pathway partners, 
and also our squads as well. And I think I might have said this earlier, but we can't do it all at once. We'll fail if we try and do too much too soon. So we want to try and, uh, you know, the rubber hits the road as well, you know. Um, we've got, that's the other thing that we've got to be mindful. And we'll learn from that. We'll learn from things we might need to to adapt and, and, and tweak as, as we go. So that'll be an important part of our planning going into next into next year. And then, of course, so really important to the selection of our athletes. And we're reviewing our current criteria as we speak to make sure there's a real uh, co uh, connection, if you like, from our programs and also our, our teams as well, trying to simplify the document. It's uh, quite detailed amount, which is good, but at the same time, we're, we're working through as we speak. And that will then connect with, obviously, the selections of uh, athletes into programs for uh, for next year. So those are our next steps from here. And I might just, I might uh, highlight, a I might just highlight a couple done. of things yep. too, um, Ashley. So on the athlete selections, what we're aiming to do is to be as objective as we can with the criteria. And um, so, for example, in the uh, National Junior uh, Program, those 35 athletes that will be selected um, will be based on um, a, um, the first group of athletes selected will just be based on where they finish at national championships. So for example, if you're in women's singles and, and your athlete finishes first or second, um, you autom automatically are selected into uh, the national program. So, so we think um, that um, approach will make it very clear for coaches and athletes on what they need to achieve um, and uh, um, and be motivating, be a real motivating factor. Um, so those that will be the first set of athletes. Then the next set of athletes um, will be the ones that will be judged more on, um, uh, on potential, um, maybe they were injured, they couldn't play, you know, all those sort of subjective things that, that selectors need to take into account. So, so we hope that that combination of, of purely objective and then those, um, you know, those other sort of more qualitative things um, will be a good method for selecting athletes into, into the squads. Um, and then um, just to reiterate around the state national camps, um, and performance pathway partners, ultimately, we want all eight states and territories to be running national camps um, and for us to be running camps in partnership with those states um, to every year. Uh, uh, and we, we ultimately want, in terms of the clubs and associations that might be performance pathway partners, in three years time, we're aiming to have 20 or 25 of those. Um, but we're just wanting to pilot so we can um, so we can identify any issues, we can tweak it a little bit, we can iron out the wrinkles and uh, we can then, you know, um, uh, uh, develop it each year and then, and then have the full program operating within three years. Uh, um, so, uh, so we're really keen for all of you who are on this call and in your clubs to, to really have a think now about whether you want to be part of this from, from a pilot pilot projects um, to think about it now because before the end of November we will be sending out um, information to um, uh, uh, to states and, and clubs um, asking for expressions of interest so we can select those part those pilot clubs um, so we've just got another question um, uh, Ashley um, and that is um, about skilled players who migrate from overseas into Australia can they be considered to join? The performance pathway. Uh, the short answer to that is yes, uh, provided that their intention is to either become a citizen or be eligible for selection to compete in BWF events. So to be selected into the, the National Senior Program, um, you will need to be eligible to represent Australia at BWF. Um, in the junior area, um, provided uh, the athlete um, it has started the process or um, uh, is able to convince us that they're definitely going to be become eligible to represent Australia, then yes, we would um, invite those people to also, um, if they meet the criteria and they're selected to be able to be part of the, um, of the program. Uh, but if a group of New Zealand players came over and they wanted to be part of uh, our camp and then go back and represent New Zealand, we need to beat New Zealand. So <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to really be healthy. We love New Zealand. We all get along really well, but we don't want to be helping them to beat us. So um, uh, uh, that'll be something that we'll manage as we go. Um, 
Uh, so maybe this is one for you, uh, Ashley. Um, just another question from Nick. Is there a relationship between the PPP and the foundation program? Is entry into the PPP based on meeting criteria? Do you want to answer that one? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a good question. Yes, yeah, so that, that's something that uh, we we are working through as we speak. So I'll be looking to just for example, um, obviously the key things will be uh, the obviously we want to make sure all of our coaches are you know properly qualified and you know all the sport integrity checks and all those key things we need to make sure we have in place. We'll look at, for example, you know obviously results and performances of athletes in uh, in our in our programs. Uh, and also a little bit about well, what's currently in place uh, in terms of uh, what the club currently delivers. Do they, you know, have a, a little performance pathway within their, you know, within their business and, um, uh, you know, do they have little athlete development plans in place? So also the rec uh, uh, resources and facilities. So there's a selection of things that we'll consider uh, with that uh, as well. Uh, and like Jamie said, and like we said before, we, we're just interested in a few programs to be able to, uh, pilot this is a new initiative but I think it's uh, a really exciting one uh, and then we'll be there just to help help support you as well just in terms of um, you know recognition and looking to help align with you work closely together um, like Jamie said before around uh, you know site visits to help support you we know the demands are really high so it'll be just a matter of us helping you know support you in any way uh, that we can but we'll also provide further information to over these next uh, over these next couple of months. I think the other thing we're really keen to see is that um, that, and this is where collaboration is really important. There might be a, a club um, that is close to a performance pathway partner club that is not able to invest in or have the coaches to take athletes to the next level. They, they might be able to take athletes up until they're 10 or 11 or 12 or to whatever level it is. And then they have a partnership with the PPP, that local club, that they can then pass on that athlete um, to a coach who can, um, who may be able to take that athlete to the next level. So that those, those partnerships are, are critically important. Now that can't happen for every club for, for different reasons. For example, if you were a club in a regional area, you had a super talented kid, well, they probably can't, you know, they're probably not going to be able to, um, uh, they'll need to stay with their family and stay with their family in their club. And we want to develop that club as well they might not be a ppp but they've got a talented athlete a coach is who's really developing that talented athlete we want to make sure that they're part of this system as well so that might be by exception but we want to use a bit of common sense and make sure that that athlete is supported in that environment as well um, but we think there are some advantages to um, ppp clubs developing partnerships with their local clubs or close clubs and, and where there is a talented athlete when it's time, when it's ready, whether they're 15, 16, 17, 18, 10, 11, or 12, that those two clubs are working together to help help develop that athlete. And just on that, Jamie, you know, I think it's important to reference regional in here as well, uh, that this will be so be important um, part of this model as well as looking at regional athletes and, and clubs as well. And this is where our particular initially our national state national camps as well. You know, if there's talented athletes out in our regions or facilities in our regions, that'll be an important part of this strategy as well as looking to our regional areas as well. Because we know that, you know, research tells us a lot of um, our elite athletes actually start in regional areas because we know that, you know, the skills they they play a lot they they all sorts of different things that they they're involved in so that'll be an important part of this system as well as how we look at around the regions if there's an a, an athlete and a coach that's isolated as well how we go about how how we go about supporting them and the families and parents as well so as um uh, if you've got any other questions just just send them through while while we're finishing up but uh we will as mentioned before uh this is all draft we're looking for the type of feedback that you have um and questions are, are fantastic for us to continue to evolve this uh if there's any if you'd like to talk to ashley um probably ashley is the best person in the first instance or but or myself if you want to talk to us about this new system feel free to give us a call but we will also send this presentation out to you so we can, um, so you can re read through it and, and have a real think about it. So we might just stop um, uh, the presentation there, Ashley. Uh, and uh, we might just end up with our big heads on the screen to finish up. 
not sure whether Ashley could use technical oh, skills. Sorry, yeah, no, to, sorry. Just uh, the, re the reception was just there. The reception just went off for a minute. So did you pass to me, Jamie? Um, no, no, I'm just saying okay. maybe just take down the presentation if you want okay. to stop presenting. Yep, sure. yeah. yep. There we go. Cool. That, that's how everyone could see our big heads. Actually. <laughs> 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 Thanks so much, everyone, uh, for coming along today. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to staying in touch with you. And uh, we'll um, uh, no doubt be presenting to you again when we've finalised all of this, um, so we can um, show you exactly what the um, uh, what the final model will be. And please keep an eye out for those expressions of interest that will come out regarding the pilot projects as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. Right. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend.